Greetings and ahoy, pirates! Medusa Serena here, and welcome to a very special episode of Ask the Sea. Now, the question that I have been asked to answer, and I'm very thrilled about the subject matter, is what is the relationship between pirates and mermaids? Well, it really boils down to its origins. Myths about the sea and sailors who inevitably became pirates, well, that's a major part of all these great nautical stories that have gone on for so many years. Stories of pirates' relationships with mermaids probably wouldn't exist without the myths that surfaced, that surfaced about the seas since man first ventured upon it. In tradition, sailors thought of mermaids as dangerous seductresses whose song could lure them to shipwreck on coral reefs and rocky coastline. Interestingly, a concurrent myth claimed that a sky-clad woman was capable of calming rough seas. No clothes. No clothes at all. Naked as a jaybird. This inspired sailors to place a bare-breasted mermaid figurehead on a ship's bow as a talisman for fair weather. No storms when things are showing. The mermaid eventually became the most common female figurehead as seen on ships during the golden age of piracy. Not a bad game. Other parts of pirate mythology come from the minds of great storytellers and writers long after the golden age of piracy went kaput. It's been said that Blackbeard himself saw and logged in his journal an encounter with one such creature, but no actual evidence or logbook has actually been cited. These folk tales figured mostly seductive mermaids who brought harm and death to humans. Many of these stories were spread by sailors or among coastal towns by people who associated mermaids with storms or curses. However, mermaid folk tales were also popular all over the world. Mermaids are usually considered lucky. But not universally. In Trinidad and Tobago, a sea-dwelling merman or mermaid was known to grant wishes if they took a liking to you. And they made those with average abilities extraordinary. In addition, they would also give them wealth and power. In the Caribbean, the Taino spoke of a legend of a mermaid named Akaia. And this woman was all things beauty and sin. sin. She generously gave men pleasure while stealing away their will. Akaia was punished eventually, and she was sent to sea um, with her sisters, who also partook of all sorts of fun and games. It seemed like a lot of sailors wanted to come and visit them there, too. So eventually what they just did is punished her and turned her into a mermaid. Like that would stop. Come on in, boys. The water's fine. <laughs> so am I. Mermaids appear in British sailing stories as unlucky omens, foretelling disaster and also provoking it. Several stories depict a mermaid speaking to the doomed ships, telling them, You'll never see land again! You know, or others she claims, you know, you're near the shore, come on! It means doom in any case. Mermaids can also be a sign of approaching rough weather. Some have been described as monstrous in size, huge, giant, like hundreds of feet, like a big, resplendent, sparkly, bedazzled kraken. Huge. Stories of merpeople interacting with sailors, well, they started to disappear by the early 18th century. However, a revival was occurring through literature and through films, such as the black and white silent film Peter Pan. But even before that, there was a book called The Pearl and the Pumpkin. This is an illustration from it. This was written in 1904. And this fabulous color illustration shows something, and this is as per Wikipedia, here's the description. Davy Jones Locker, it turns out to be a seafloor boarding house with Davy Jones as its harassed manager, and Blackbeard, Captain Kidd, Long John Silver, and Midshipman Easy among its troublesome boarders. So who'd have thought? Davy Jones's locker was actually a boarding house. Hollywood. Hollywood films and TV certainly did its part to further popularize the relation between pirates and mermaids. Hooray for pirate wood. Ooh, that sounded odd. The myth of the roguish charismatic pirate and the enchanting beguiling mermaid have taken on their own unique mythology. 
and it continues to entertain and engage imaginations to this very day. For International Pirate Month, I'm Medusa Renna. Party hard, everyone. Getting a little dry. I'm gonna go back in the swamp. Serena, there's nobody like her. She seems to be half woman and half fish. The world might be frightful, but she is so delightful. I like to see her swim around a bit and watch her tail go swim. Into Serena, she is excited. You know, I ate a fish sandwich today and now I feel a bit guilty about it. But we want to thank Medusa Arena for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find her and the rest of her mermaid friends at facebook.com slash Medusa Arena. Just click on the link in our description. And while you're there, please be sure to click on the link for Feeding America and help families in need. Every dollar you donate helps to feed 10 families and is greatly appreciated. So please donate what you can. Spread the word about International Pirate Month. Invite your friends to come visit. We'll see you tomorrow.